Hello everyone. Welcome to FE Learning. Today I'm going to continue with uh, the third video of design approach. Right? The last two video was uploaded already in the last week and the previous week. So today I'm just going to continue with that one. I hope you already have seen that video. If you have not seen yet, so I would recommend you to see that video first and then come to this one. Right? So let's continue uh, with today's topics. So today we are going to discuss uh, hydraulic remote area, fire rectangle and density area calculation, right? It's just a short example how we are going to uh, continue with that one, right? So let's begin with the first one, the hydraulic remote areas, right? So if you can see here, Here is this is our riser connection, right? From here we are getting water supply to our sprinkler system, different branches. So must remote location from here, it must be in this area, right? Okay, so for this case, this will be the remote area because it is at the far distance from the riser connection. And for this case, here we have the connection from the riser and Water is going all the way from this side, you know, up to here and same from the this side, you know, up to here. So looks like if you see it's geometry, these are the locations that is far away from our, uh, our uh, connection. So we can say that this is the design area for this case. And similarly, we can find a lot of config configuration in NFPA 13. Uh, which is around in chapter 27 they have given lots of configuration right so for different application then we have the design areas right in fire rectangle uh, the next one we have so always uh, mostly design areas shall be rectangular uh, having a dimensional parallel to the branch line right and at least 1.2 times the square root of the area of a finger operation right so let's say if your if your uh, project is for oh1 right so if for oh1 going to the graph let's wait a moment for the oh1 if you are going to graph here right So we have 0.15 at 1500 GP, uh, sorry, at 1500 square feet. So we can say this is our 1500 for 1500 times 1 1.2, right? 1 1.2. So it's not exactly, you know, 1.2. Ignore that one. So So there is a concern about that one, you know, uh, as for the research, you know, uh, various research has been done in the past and they shown that if there is a fire, you know, mostly in the fire grow like uh, in a rectangular shape, you know, the fire will go. If there is a fire at this location, the fire is going to be like this one or this size. So the fire is mainly going to be in the shape of rectangular this is why uh, we have to consider the rectangular shape if it is possible you know because if the spacing is uniform we can go with the rectangular shape right because there is a concern with that uh, if this areas you know let's say for this loop here is our riser connection and this the last one at most far distance from this one so if you if all the sprinkler in this last one operating at good flow and pressure as for design so all these design areas will fill right mostly the water will go the water demand will be more in that pipe and so we require more uh, force or pressure to deliver such quantity of water right Okay, so uh, now since we discussed the design fire rectangle the next one we have uh, when we 
locate a spindler uh, even layered the long leg of rectangle can be divided by the distance between the spindler on a branch line right so now what we are concerned how much is spindler we need in one branch right so that we have to calculate with this formula so the, this formula determines the number of spindler per line right so if you put 1.2 uh, multiplied by square root of 1500 for OH1 as I said in, in the beginning and the S is the maximum distance between two spindles. So based on that we can come to some values right? and uh, we'll have a look at that. Okay, So here is our case uh, and uh, what we are going to do we are just going to see how it how it going to uh, apply there. So let's say for example, what is the number of spindles we need in design areas. Let's say our case is the OH1 for our project and we are using a standard space type spindler and we have spaced it 10 feet by 11 feet, right? So uh, this one we are just going to uh, uh, calculate, you know, how much uh, maximum spindle is required in one line and as we know from the area of spindler coverage equals to S by L. So S is the distance between the sprinkler and L is the distance between the lines. So if this is the spacing, uh, we have 110 square feet. So uh, one sprinkler can protect 110 square feet, you know, in those areas for uh, our case, the one we have selected. And density for OH1 is 0 0.15 GPM per square feet over 1500 square feet of the area, right? So let's go to the whiteboard and there we'll be having a look at those various lines. Okay, so let's say this is our case as, is, as we said. And we want to make sure uh, how much spindler we need in this. Uh, suppose this is our project, right? And here we have this is our uh, must remote location. Uh, this is our uh, riser connection from where we are getting uh, water, right? So as we can see, these are the areas. Right? Looks like at must remote, right? So we want to make sure uh, how much spindler we, we need in this line. For that we have to do calculation. Just look at this, uh, the coverage areas and densities and uh, let's say this is the the distance between two spindler, I mean from this one to this one is 11 feet and distance between two lines of the spindler is 10 feet. Right, so this is 11 feet and 10 feet between two lines. This is why uh, here this comes uh, 10 by 11, 1 by 10 square feet. Right? So mostly what happens if there is a uh, fire and one spindler activates, so this is so consider this spindler, right? It will cover this uh, half of this side and half of this, half of this and half of this and the remaining will be covered by the adjacent spindler. This is how the maximum uh, coverage areas for the spindle we have to uh, we used to get. Now we want to make sure here with our example how much spindler we need in the design areas, right? So let's wait. Just apply the formulas as we discussed, right? This formula 1.2, right? Multiplied by. Um, Fifteen hundred and divide by the maximum distance between two spindles, which is eleven feet, right? And if you multiply this all, uh, it is one point two uh, multiplied by root fifteen hundred is fifteen hundred uh, is fourteen six point four seven and divide by eleven. We can come to no, no, not exactly this one. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. 
uh, if you multiplying 1500 square root of 1500 is 38 and then multiplied by 1.2 we have 46.47 and that divide by 11 so it is 4.22 so let's say this is 4.22 so we need uh, this much is finger in that line so let's assume for now that just consider 4.2 is 4 right so we need 4 is finger in in the hydraulic design areas right uh, as for uh, our this concern what I am going to do just let, let me erase everything clear canvas right so I will upload it again uh, powerpoint And let me upload the uh, upload the image also. For library image. From desktop field add this one. Now from our calculation for this project, we decide that we need four sphincter. So what we have to do, we have to just go to uh, the last sprinkler and take it as node number one right how much we need total 4.22 uh, maximum in one line right 4.2 sprinkler in one line by the way I, I, I missed one step that if the total design areas is 1500 okay and those design areas uh, we have a in this areas we have a space sprinkler by 10 feet by 11 feet so it is 110 square feet so one sprinkler can protect one sprinkler can uh, protect 110 square feet so total design areas divided by 110 we can come to a value of around uh, Fifteen hundred over one one zero thirteen point six CD, right? So now we have thirteen point six CD. Let's just consider it fourteen, right? So we have to consider fourteen sphincter in our design areas, and with this formula, we already we, we already discussed that the maximum distance over eleven feet spacing between a sphincter is four point two two. Maximum number of sprinkler required. We'll just consider it four, right? So we'll start from here. This is our node number one, node number three, second, third, and four. So we'll just keep. Uh, we have uh, total fourteen. So better to go with uh, one, two, three, four, and here we have a last one, fifth, right? Start with here six, seven, eight, nine, and. 10 and then we have another another uh, 4 right so start with uh, here from here again 11 node number 11 spring number 12 13 and 14 so we can say that these are our hydraulic remote areas right even we do not need to consider this one uh, to make a perfect rectangular what we are uh, what we assume here that suppose the last sprinkler contains five number of sprinkler right so if we supply water at exact flow and pressure requirement based on our hydraulic calculation if the water comes to this line the water comes to this too because we have already uh, included in our hydraulic calculation software that we have 
tested 40 minutes mcdr and we calculated how much flow and pressure required so if we completed all these five here we can also get the full flow and pressure and here also and if we get in these areas all the area of this spindler is going to be protected by your design for this specific project right so for this case uh, the total number of spindler uh, we have to consider 14 in our design areas and one line we have to uh, consider maximum of four uh, by the way this need to be uh, corrected here it is four so we have to go up to this line only right so we have to make a rectangular like this one and uh, this is not accurate exactly right let me we have to go to five but by default i have considered around around uh, five in a loop that we 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 suppose not to do that one so let me uh, erase let me erase that one okay and i will include this figure again and uh, Here is our calculation right so as we calculated earlier that we need four spindler in one line right and total spindler is 40 right so we can start from this one and that this is our one two three and four start from here again 5 6 7 8 right 9 10 11 12 and then we can keep our two spindler here 13 and 14 although this is not a, a feasible it's going more away from those rectangles so better we, we can consider 4.2 to equals to 5 right so as we go with the previous we'll go with the same one right so 1 2 3 4 and then this is our node number 5 then again come from here 6 7 8 9 and 10 and from here again 11 12 13 and 14 so this is our mass hydraulic remote areas is sprinkler uh, in the design areas right so you can say that one although it is not a perfect uh, although it is not a perfect uh, rectangle but yes we can say that one if the last leg of the the rectangular this areas can get water as full pressure and flow so this one and this one so this is our uh, the hydraulic design areas based on this project uh, we just use the formulas uh, and we got to the point that uh, 4.2 to we have to consider the next value to 5 and total we need 14 you know the number of spindler in hydraulic design areas looks like a little bit high because the spacing is only 10 feet by 11 feet if we have increase these values to like uh, 12 feet by 12 feet which is uh, which is acceptable by nfa we can reduce our spindler further to some uh, some below values right so that's all about today right uh, i hope you have uh, learned uh, something from this video and if you like this videos please subscribe share so that uh, so that a more number of participants can benefit from this one if you have any doubt any comment or suggestion you can contact me through LinkedIn, Facebook, or you can send me email at learnfe at gmail.com. That's for today. I'll see you next time and take care.